The new video tonight with a graphic illustration of the combustible mix of teenagers, cars, and distraction. This is a warning not only for parents, but for anybody who gets behind the wheel. And here's ABC's Lindsay Janis. Watch as this teen, distracted by her phone for roughly six seconds, loses control and careens off the road. And this teen, one hand on the phone, another on the wheel, just seconds before colliding with another car. Here's another playing DJ before running off the road. And another chatting to her friend, then plowing into the car in front of her. That was that phone. These shocking videos are all part of an unprecedented look at the number one killer of American teenagers, car crashes. In the most comprehensive research of its kind, the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety analyzed nearly 1,700 accident videos, finding distraction a factor in nearly 60% of crashes. That's four times the previous estimates based on police reports. What we call eyes off the road. The and biggest so distraction may come as a surprise. What was the most common? The most common was talking to somebody in the vehicle, exactly what we're doing. And the second biggest distraction? Texting and talking on cell phones. Teens have the highest crash rate of any group in the country. Maryland teenager Liz Marks was a beautiful, popular high schooler who even did modeling on the side. When in April 2012, she was driving and received a text from her mom. I would ask Liz all the time, do you text and drive? Do you use your cell phone behind the wheel? And she told me no. So I felt confident and I felt that it was okay to text Liz. In the moments Liz took her eyes off the road to read the text, she crashed into a tow truck. The 17-year-old was airlifted to a hospital with serious brain injuries. I remember praying and as my head was down, I saw blood all over the floor, and it was my daughter's blood. And now at 20, Liz remains disfigured, disabled, and blind in one eye. So let's just take a look and see how you're doing in here. Today, ocularist Timothy Friel at Johns Hopkins is fitting Liz with a prosthetic eye, just one part of her lifelong medical journey. What's my future life with this? Well, it's going to be very much like having two eyes again. From the accident injuries, she's lost her sense of smell can't create natural tears, and can't fall asleep without drugs. I had to really learn how to walk, talk, breathe, write, chew, ABC, one, two, three. I didn't know how to do anything. Liz and her mother, Betty, now travel the country speaking out at high schools to warn teens about the hazards of distracted driving and how no text is worth risking your life. We ask the students, do you text and drive? And, you know, a lot of them raise their hands. And then we ask, do your parents text and drive and those hands go flying so the young adults the young drivers think if they can do it then i can do it if you get a text don't look at it their psa for the department of transportation has been viewed over eight million times on youtube it's a warning that isn't just for teens but for all of us who drive in this age of 24 7 technology so here i go robert there's a lot of traffic building up here to better understand how small distractions can lead to serious, sometimes fatal errors. She's really letting you have it up. That's nice. Oh. Poor dear. I headed to Fresh Green Light Driving School in Greenwich, Connecticut with AAA's Robert Sinclair. This is a multi-screen simulator that many teens are using to learn how to drive. Try texting him at 35350. I was surprised how just a tiny bit of distraction made me second guess my driving ability. <gasps> Sinclair says if we're serious about safety, we need to eliminate every distraction. Even before you get started, we're going to have you remove your bulky winter coat. No kidding. Absolutely. I can't drive my coat? You shouldn't because it restricts the movement of your arms. Winter coat does I'm not, not allow. I'm going to disobey the driving instructor. No, that's right. So how can we all be safer behind the wheel? 16 to 19 years old, we're talking about a driver that has very limited experience, limited training, and numerous studies have shown that the, the young brain is not fully developed until it gets to 21 or 22 years old. I asked Robert what parents could do to minimize teen accidents. Number one, set some rules. You let your teen driver know exactly what is expected of him or her, where you outline very carefully, perhaps even with a written contract, the behaviors that are acceptable. Number two, buy a safe car. You want a slow, underpowered, preferably big vehicle. And number three, monitor their behavior. There are devices that you can track. Spy on your children, is Why that not? Thing? You want to keep them alive? For all drivers, adults included, he warns against loud music and also says just because you use a hands-free device doesn't mean you're safe. 
AAA is now pushing states to pass laws prohibiting cell phone use by teen drivers. So far, 13 states have not. For distracted teen drivers lucky enough to survive, the punishment can be severe. In 2012, 18-year-old Aaron DeVoe became the first driver in Massachusetts to be convicted of vehicular homicide by texting after hitting a 54-year-old man. On the day of the accident, DeVoe sending a reported 193 texts. As for Liz Marks, who answered that fateful text from her mom, her message is simple. The message is to not text and drive. A text message can wait, but your life can't, so just don't waste it like I wasted mine. For Nightline in Connecticut, I'm Lindsay Janis. All right, thanks to Lindsay Janice tonight. And you should know that every driver shown in that AAA video did survive. Nobody was killed in any of those crashes.